Oh, hi. Kevin Easy here. Well, I was going to talk to you about romance, relationships, and everything shitty with that. Um, and I actually recorded this whole episode once already, and uh, at the end of it I got a phone call, and it fucked it all up. Plus, I had low storage space. So, I had to erase files out of it, and uh, here we go for round number two. Fight! Alright, so, I just got out of a very serious one-sided relationship. Um, I don't know if she really existed. Um, I think she did. I think my roommates are. <laughs> no, actually, uh, a girl I really thought the world of for a minute. Um, very pretty girl. Um, uh, very... Uh, everything I liked about her was just, um... It ended up being something that I... <clears throat> Alright, here, let me let me rearrange this here a little bit. Uh, I met her, I was kind of blown away by this girl. Um, we had, like, talked about stuff. We were talking about serial killers and all kinds of stuff. And she was cool. Like, I, she blew my mind a little bit. Um, and it's easy to do, I guess. <laughs> um, but, you know... I thought, I thought we'd, like, uh, we'd really hit it off, and I didn't see her. She blew me off um, in kind of a shitty way, and I was really upset about it. And We didn't talk for a minute, and uh, I always regretted it, and I tried to tried to get in talk, touch with her, talk again, and she, you know, eventually she came warmed up, and we talked again, and we hit it off again, I thought. And, uh, you know, then I, so I wouldn't see her again. I wouldn't see her again. And I kept thinking, oh, you know, this is the time. Well, finally, um, I... Just got, you know, after the uh, whole video thing uh, with me and the work and all that crap, um, which was right after that, like, immediately, like, a few days later, like, within the week or whatever, she got a hold of me and, uh, um, was kind of hanging out here with me, um, and, uh, I, I thought, I thought, wow, you know, this, I've, I've got her company, like, she's here all the time now, or, you know, not all the time, but, like, she was here a lot, like, a lot for a couple days. And I realized that uh, oh, she was totally different to me. Like, it was not nice to me anymore. Not, like, listening to me talk and her, her talk about the other things. We, we, it just seemed like, uh, I don't know, everything I did annoyed her. And she lived at my place. Or she didn't live here, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, she stayed over here. And I started thinking about it, you know. It was like, hmm, you, you can't be nice to me even, okay? Like, you know foods were always wrong, um, uh, you can't kiss her, can't touch her, can't do this, you know, I'm like, you can't hug her, um, and it just was like, wow, and I'm like, do you even like me, yeah, I told you, I like like you, you know, I know you love me, but I like like you, and I'm working on a relationship, working on a relationship, how do you be like, this close of proximity, look at this room, ain't that goddamn big here, folks, like, you can't just like, oh, hey, uh, I'm just trying to get to know you. Like, I've seen your fucking tits and your ass, I'm pretty sure, which I think maybe quite a few people have, but <clears throat> we'll get to that. Anyhow, you know, we had a, uh, like, it was, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't intimate, and it wasn't anything other than, like, I felt like I was being used. Um, and I, I hated it, I hated feeling like that, I was like, I'm, I gotta be, I'm, 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 I'm thinking too into this, I'm, because, you know, she always told me that, you know. And, and, and when I first met her, like, it gave me, like, there was this, and she still has this, I mean, she's not, like, I wasn't completely hoodwinked and bushwhacked, you know, and she, this is this person that can be deep, and, uh, you know, be sad and sincere and stuff, but I, she wears a mask all the time, and it's hard to get past it, and then even if I knew I was getting past the mask, I'm not too sure if that's the real face, or what, you know, there's a lot of angst there, um, Always, like, thoughts of suicide and threats of suicide and all that. You know how to pick them, Kev. Yes, you do, Kev. But, you know, in some ways, I'm kind of drawn to that kind of person. Especially with women, because it, I guess it's something in my nature of, like, protecting. Anyways, it, it didn't go well for me. I was I was not happy with how it went. Although, I learned a lot. And I'm not saying I... I I didn't want that to happen to me. Like, uh, it wasn't a complete waste. I feel like, even though it doesn't work out, and she's since written me today, um, I, I apologize for the 
to telling her to go because you know it's one of these things I, I don't even know how to explain it without sounding doofy but like we have to have trust to be with somebody just anything like your work roommates your you know schoolmates you have to have trust you know if you're doing some project together you got to be able to know that the other one isn't fucking you over or is going to be there for you you know that's the same thing as how a relationship works guys you know if i can't trust you to tell me the truth about what's going on i can't trust you to feel like to 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 be a person that you want to have towards you like I don't want to have somebody get snotty with me every time I ask something or tell them that, like, I don't like being touched like that. I don't like this. I don't like your beard. I don't like this. I'm, I'm immediately going to think you don't like me. And that's probably the fucking truth. Right? Yeah. We learned to fucking, we like somebody. We learned to look over things. And there was no looking over shit. It was just natural. And I'm like, who the fuck? How much ungratefulness can you have? I, I get it, you cleaned up in here and shit, but you didn't clean up. My house wasn't that fucking big of a wreck. And just so you can fucking sit here and put your air fresheners and shit in my fucking house doesn't give you the right to fucking treat me like a piece of shit in my own fucking house. And when she went to go fucking hang out with some guy, dude, I'm not saying there was anything, like, wrong platonically, but, like, you go hang out with him, and I'm sitting right here, and there's no reason she should go out to do. I'm thinking, you know, you're fucked. I'm, I'm done. I'm over with this. And you come back and get smart with me. Yes. Hit the bricks. It's over. The fantasy has popped. And now whew, reality sinks in. You aren't that cool. You, like, you aren't that cool to me. And that's fine. Like, we're not all made to like each other. Like, you don't have to be nice to me. I don't have to see you again. And you don't have to see me again. And I've gotten my closure. Because, like, you know, the, if it would have ended in the beginning... When I, you know, she ghosted me and stuff, and I didn't get that opportunity to actually meet her past that, I would have had that, and would have, I would have longed for more. Since I've gotten my fill of it, I've, I've, I've ate it till I'm sick, basically, you know, and I, I see that, you know, there's nothing there from her, you know, there's, she could say all the time, you know, like, I really like, like you. I, whatever, I'm not in third grade, if you can't tell if you like somebody or not, and you can't tell if you can, like, if you can't put yourself into, because, like, our problems weren't because I was an asshole, our problems were because she fucking never, you know, she wasn't part of me and her, there was no me and her, it's like, you're just gonna stay at my house, kind of, like, laying in bed, but, you know, whatever, I don't know, it's kind of weird shit, but, there's probably somebody out there that was actually getting her love and attention, and that's, heart, I mean, as heartbreaking as it is, it's not really that uncommon to me, and it's not really that heartbreaking anymore. And I wrote her a nice. Uh, well, I wasn't nice that night when you know she said she was gonna leave, uh, go sleep somebody or somewhere else. And I was like, well, uh, take all your stuff because we're done. And she started saying something else, and I don't remember how the act. I was a little bit intoxicated. You guys watch the videos. I said something about her, like you know, something about her mother, or father. What did they think about her doing what she's doing? And, uh, which was, like, a low blow. I, I admit it. And I apologized. I sent a fucking apology. Not to, not to have her, uh, I want her back or, or win her back or, um, do anything other than the fact that I, I knew I went too far. And I felt bad for, I, I wanted it to work. I wanted to be everything I said I was going to be for her. But I can't be that if, like, you're not on board with things and you weren't wanting to be with me. Yeah, I'm not a fucking martyr. I'm not a lick. An L-I-C-K. Because I don't believe in ghetto spelling things like good. G-U-D. Get the fuck out of here. There's somebody who fucking talks shit about how to spell the word lick. And then talk in that same sentence. Tell them I'm all good. Because, you know, they supposedly... Whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to rake it through the coals. It's, you've had enough of her shit. And... I think you're a sweet person when you try, but, you know, you can't be a brat, and that's what, I don't know, if I don't, maybe it's younger people, younger ages than mine, they're just bratty, no, uh, no gratitude, no, no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, oh, respect, and like, I'm not, I'm kind of, like, I'm an old man, and I need respect from you, but, like, if you're in somebody else's house, you kind of respect them, you don't fucking masturbate in their fucking bathroom, I think, I think that happened. I think if I could have said it, like, doing me, she was in there masturbating. That's, that's a rough one to feel, Kev. 
I'm, I'm, had had uh, we had the option to try, I don't think she would have had to masturbate about it. But whatever. Can't can't all be winners. Can't all be all uh, can't be all home runs. Can't be all. You know, there's plenty. There's plenty in my fucking um, in my ranking. You know, I've definitely there's been a couple ladies that like the like the little bit of the old Kevster. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. No, I'm not really kidding. I'm actually just quite serious, but I'm going too far. And I'll be a gentleman and I'll pull it back. Pull it back. Pull it back. Pull it back. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just saying, like, um, I don't think it was, I don't, we never had any sex, so I, like, you can't, that was, can't be the problem. So, you know, if you were m willing to rather bash your fucking clam with a fucking little metal doohickey, um, I, I think I'm totally off. I think you fucking probably should have never asked, like, made it seem like you were here for me. Because, like, you weren't. You were here because you needed a place to stay, I think. Or you went to party. I don't know. I don't know what you were doing. I just don't think it was here for me. And that sucks. But, um, it's over and done. And, uh, it wasn't that long. And I got the closure I needed from the beginning of that relationship. Because there was no relationship. I, I thought maybe you would be awesome. Because of the way you made me feel. But. Feelings change real fast. And like. A relationship. Unless you're nurturing it. Like fucking a flower. Or a plant. You know. You're. Pulling the weeds back. You know. That's the things. The understandings. And the things that try to kill it. Suffocate it. And you're watering it. With fucking. Love and attention. And you know. Pain. Like giving them respect. That flower's gonna die. And that flower being the relationship. You know, I tried to fucking, tried to fucking talk to you about how I felt about how you're f treating me. How I, how I should treat you better. Like, when you said something, like, don't pet my leg, I'm not a dog. And I'm like, I, I, okay, I just didn't really pat your leg, like, <laughs> I went, okay, hey, sweetheart, I'm going to go in here. Like, two seconds. And then I slammed my car door on my car, on my car, which, uh, when I first met you, you talked about how you didn't even fucking want to drive. You know? I'm scared of cars. So, my car that I am dealing with, I slam my car door, and you tell me not to slam my car door? Get the fuck out of here. I, ugh. You're just, a, you're just a bitch, then. You're just being a bitch to be a bitch. Because it ain't your car, ain't your thing. Shut the fuck up. You know, if you don't like it, don't get in the car. Like, you fucking walk home from wherever you gotta go. You can walk to the, wherever you're gonna stay at now. I don't, you know, it's just, you don't have to be like that. There's no point in it. And then I try to make amends, try to make amends, try to make amends, try to make amends. Doesn't work. So I wasn't too surprised when my apology for how the incident went down, because like when she'd come back from hanging out with her friend, this guy friend, older guy friend, my age, my guy friend, uh, you know, I sat there and she acted smart about shit again, and I was just like, you know, Here's a song I wrote about you. Um, I read it to her. And it was just a little bit of talking amongst us, ourselves. And I just, I don't know. She said, we kind of argued a little bit. And she said something about leaving. And I said, go. Like, I take all your shit and go this time. And then we argued a little bit more. And I said some things that probably I shouldn't have said about her. You know, how, how, how they'd be ashamed of you because of the way you're acting. It was uncalled for. I was in the moment. I was a little bit inebriated. I was hurt. Yeah, I also thought, like, you know, if I don't say, hey, I'm done with this right now, like, it's going to be another day, and I'm going to feel worse the next day because I'm going to feel like there's going to be another thing that's going to happen. Like, you can't just, like, you know, I don't know, invite people over to your house, and then invite people over to your house, to, like, not to your house, but to my house, invite people over to my house that I don't know and then have them pick you up the next, the next day and go off and play for a while or whatever you're doing and then come back and then go again like this is not a, this is not a hussy flop house so uh, you got like let go you, you were no longer, like you told me we weren't anything we weren't real really <laughs> you really really liked me and uh, we were working on a relationship and I 
was never in something like that. I never will be in something like that. Um, I'm over with it. Sorry. Plain and simple, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if fucking I'm not cool enough for you. That's 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 not a bad thing. You know? And uh I'm not fucking stupid enough to let you fucking manipulate me like that for very long and you know, I probably should have just fucking kicked you out the first day. But I'm you know, what no, I'm just kidding. I I should probably never gotten involved like that like that. I should have let go in the beginning. I just I always thought there'd be more there and I was wrong. Plain and simple. Like uh for the good things that are there, and the things I loved and enjoyed, um, and I have good memories about, like, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense and acts weird and shitty, just how, how people are just, you know, it, like I've always said, do, you know, treat other people as you would have treated, be treated by them, you know, and uh, I, I guarantee I would never act away like, uh, get your hand off me, or uh, I don't like being kissed, or uh, I don't like being hugged, uh, you know, they fucking... At a certain point, it's just you make somebody feel like, you know, you don't want anything to do with them. And then, like, why are you here? Well, why are you pretending to have any kind of relationship? Or wanting or any, just, you aren't. You're being a fucking, you're being a poser. You're being a pretender. And the reason you pose and pretend is you have an agenda. And the agenda was what? I don't know. Keep the fucking the snow off your back and the, the wind out of your hair so you're not out in the fucking, out in the trash cans. You know, like the stray cats out there. I know. I mean, it's my big mouth that actually started it because you know, I was overblown with friendliness and think the stars are in my eyes and I can't see any better beauty anymore. It's all going to work out because I project through my expectations. I, I project what I want on that person. What I, what I see, what I see as a director of the movie in my brain. I see this and then the movie starts playing and the it goes out of frame it's in some parts this isn't right here this isn't here pretty soon there's no goddamn movie you had you're out completely there's no fucking film and that's where i'm at that's where i was at i'm not i'm not i don't feel bad about it it's for once the cleanest break i've ever had and i thought i'd probably be more upset but besides her shit talking to me earlier today like telling me like you know that lick was spelled with a l-i-c Okay, well, you, half the time you don't spell half the shit right in your fucking sentences because you're typing too fast. And, you know, something will be like, you know, it's just petty shit. Fucking trying to get over, you know, I'm, I'm fucking better than you. Well, you are. You're better than me. In your world, you were better than me. In my world, you don't exist either. And, like, that's it. Just leave. Like, I said I'd be friends with you, but, like, you know, I'm also not going to hear shit again from you. Because if that's the kind of friendship you have, I don't want to be around you. I... I don't tell people hateful things and tell them how I want to be treated all the time because that's being pompous and, you know, just, just I don't know, just irritating. Like, I, I'm cool with people listening to music, but I definitely don't need you in my car playing your phone as loud as you can while I'm trying to drive my car with your music. That's fucking just, I don't know, there's like experiences like that. I'm just like, yeah, it was... It was doomed to fail, you know. Kevin, put your big boy pants on and tell this little girl to go home. And I had to, man. I'm okay. Like, there's another fish in the sea. There was there was a plan A before you were around, so I went back to plan A. So, uh, I just, I don't know. I didn't want to sit here and, hear and rant and rave about uh, you know, another girl, but I do. And I am. And uh, thank God I wrote another decent song from it. I think I think it'll be decent once I get it worked out with some of the bugs and shit and come up with it. But you know, you were my muse. I was. I didn't lie about that. In the end, you just helped me create a new song. <laughs> but I, I was, I was. Uh, I wish that I got that that first night I hung out with you would never have ended, because that was the way I like to fucking remember it all. <laughs> but. And again, the last night is when I wrote that song, and it is, it's, it's going to be the thing that survives you. Like, I've written songs by, my, I've written a song by, about, one X has two songs. My first X has a song called Fairweather Farewell, 
that's the earliest one I think um, but but there was a song it wasn't a there wasn't a breakup song or anything but I had this idea before I actually had the long list of exes um, I had a song called uh, um, what the hell is it called what the hell is it called um, put your arms <laughs> And it was it was written it was written back in the Uninvited, so it was written about like ninety seven, and it was this joke I got out of Cracked magazine, which I don't think Cracked is around anymore. I think Mad's not around either. So, um, but like it was you know one of the two isn't. I know one of the two isn't around anymore. I think it's Mad, but uh, it was in a Cracked magazine, and it had a butcher. It was Darth Vader the butcher. It was like what if um, what if people from the Star Wars had to take other jobs, and it had. Darth Vader's a butcher, and then behind him it said, "Butchered arms around me." And I thought that was the dumbest joke, but I said, "That's a cool song." And at the time, we were really in the Misfits and shit, so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But it was like, I had kind of like my thing about uh, I kind of a, it was like heaven sent with looks to kill. Said she'd love me, but I doubt she will. Milky white complexion with her hair dyed red. One of these days you're gonna wind up dead. Butchered arms around me. Don't hold so tight. You're never gonna leave me because I'm up all night. They say, you got a face to love, but you're a whole lot more. You never leave me, never show me the door. Mickey White complexion with her hair dyed red. One of these days you're going to wind up dead. Put your arms around me, hold me tight. Say, you're never going to leave me because it's up all night. Easy, but kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, one of my exes, recent ones. Anyways, that's just random there. But uh, Fairweather, um, I posted that up uh, the other day. That's, that was written about my first wife and... Uh, a guy who played guitar for us and um we're not even friends anymore he actually uh to do the whole video thing uh we aren't friends anymore so you know sometimes you lose friends over shit and uh i like i said i i don't regret it um much much i mean i i regret the fact that it made a bigger deal about it than it really should have and if i would have known it was going to make such a thing i probably wouldn't have done it the way i did it but at the same time i stand behind what i put up on here and uh Try not to erase them because uh, I want to like a record of um, what I think, and I feel that that's the realness that I'm trying to give uh, to you. You know, it's like a this could be a car crash. I could just like babble out incoherently and say something stupid, but uh, and we've seen it. <laughs> we've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen the repercussions even. But you know, like I lost this one friend again. We've been we've been friends for a long time. Actually, pretty tight sometimes, but. You know, back in the day, he fucking deuced our band over, and I wrote this song, Fair Weather, about him and her, my ex-wife and him. And it's, you know, it's, like I said, it's on the thing. Uh, then there's my second wife, who has End Season, written about her. Um, uh, Asphyxia was written um, about about her. Um, then there's, uh, let's see. I know there's more in here. There was another song that we didn't... It might go to Curse of Z one of these days. I know it's... Um, oh, and I can't think of the name of it. It's called... Fuck. I can't remember it offhand. Um, if, I'm, if I was on on camera, I'd, I'd be able to think it up. I'd just play the riff and I'd, I'd try to figure it out again. Something... Um, God. This is, at the end of the course, it says something like, My heart's against the wall. Um... God damn it! Oh, simple dancer. Um, wasn't really a, isn't really a love song per se, but it is about I guess dancers, the little girl that does bad kind of shit. You know, uh, simple dancer. Uh, I'll post it up again soon. Um, I don't know if we're gonna go back and redo it, um, re-record it like better. I would like to. I don't know if it would go better with Curse of Z or Let It Go. Sometimes like some 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 of the songs for Let It Go. Uh, Brian was never really big in, and Brian wasn't our original drummer. It was a guy named Mike, and then we had a white boy, white boy from 3130. He played with us for a second. Um, played with us one show. He played half the show with uh, Mike, and uh, then we got Brian in, and I took Mike and said, hey, we don't want to get rid of you. You can play second guitar, and I worked for a while until um, things didn't work out, and he and I split the company. And uh, then we went back. We went to a three-piece: me, Eric, Brian. 
and it worked until I went to St. Louis. And then um, we brought in Jason Hilliard because I was living in several states away and I was only coming back every couple months, uh, play a show, practice, or whatever it was, uh, which almost ended up being a mutiny, kind of. Um, it's one of those things like I got back and I hated fucking just singing again because like once you stop, once you start fucking playing an instrument, it's so much better. I, I couldn't, I can't really tell you that I would want to just go back and just sing all the time. It, I feel lazy doing it. I don't know. It's just more. I mean, it's awesome when you have a guitar or bass and you're just playing along and singing it. It's a cool feeling. So, but uh, like I said, there's a this new one, um, and then there was a uh, one of my exes. Uh, that uh, is currently incarcerated, uh, that is, you know, still my friend actually, I wrote um, two songs that haven't been recorded yet, and one of them is called Burnt, and the other one is called Start Off Running, and I wrote them pretty much, Start Off Running was kind of about her, uh, really, but I wrote them kind of inspired by her, so, yes, that, that Facebook meme about like dating a musician just so you can break up with them so they can write songs it's totally true it totally works <laughs> so thank you to all my exes without you i would have nothing to write about um so this goes to you my latest um i don't i don't wish you any, i don't wish you any ill will i really don't i'm for me it's uh, a clean break uh i saw you're incompatible I'm I'm not I'm not the person I ain't the one you're gonna treat like that I ain't the one and uh, that's cool like you know you got you got a fucking life I'm not mad at you I, I I'm still your friend if you ask me for a favor I might you know I might do a favor for you yeah if you would yeah whatever I don't know what the future holds but I I can guarantee you it doesn't help hold me feeling like I was feeling for the last couple of days in my house I uh, ain't that gonna be <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a selfish person when it comes to how I feel about my personal happiness, which I mean, doesn't mean I'm just want to be, I'm happy and everybody else has to be sad. I'm just saying, I'm not going to feel sad in my own situation because of you. I'm not going to not play my music or something because of the other members of my band. It's going to be what makes me happy. So, you know, I'm, I'm a bit like motivated into my own personal happiness over yours. I think that's how we are as people. Like really, I'm not a martyr, so you know, um, it was it wasn't nothing to you. I mean, you've proven it. Um, so I don't. I, like I said, my apology to you. Um, I, I was bad. I felt bad about it. You deserve somebody. You deserve better than the way this, this relationship ended, or whatever lack of whatever it was. You deserve better. I hope you find somebody good. Um, always be here for you. And I just left it at that. Well, then I got another one back from her, which I didn't expect, and basically told me that I wasn't sorry, uh, that I knew exactly what I was doing, and what I said was mean, and I'm like, okay, well, you can accept my apology or not, um, at this point I don't care, you know, um, goodbye, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your lick, you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody fucking you're gonna take advantage of, but I, you know, I don't wish you no, no ill will, sorry, bye. And then I had to hear how Lick was misspelled, uh, which is L-I-C. And I was like, okay, Lick is in, like, being a fool, being a sucker. Um, like, that's L-I-C, like, it's Rob. Well, the L-I-C you saw it done was probably misspelled by somebody who was trying to talk, uh, what is it, urban? You know, black? I don't know, I don't think it's black. But thank you white people out there for fucking, I heard you chime in the background. No. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever, slang, you know, and say fucking for shizzle and stuff, like, okay, so, you say that, and then, in the same sentence that you say, it is L-I-C, and it's about robbery, not prostitution, and I go, yeah, but you said, good, G-U-D at the end of it, now, that's misspelled, that's not how you spell good, that's good, it's good, hey, yo, it's good, dark south, so anyways, you're an idiot just as much as I am. I just, I'm not going to point fun at you about it. I'm not going to... Why? You have enough problems as it is. Like I, I never was there to make your life worse. I was literally trying to fucking like you and love you. You know. It's, you're incapable of that from me. And I am incapable of being treated like an insignificant thing that you 
use for your own pleasure. Like, and not even that way. I'm just, I wish it was that way. That'd be a little bit, at least better. At least better about that. This is the first chick I've had in a long time that's fucking never, like, was any kind of intimate with me, so. And when I heard other things about it, like, you know, old, well, people that knew you said that you used to, you know, do things for money. That made me kind of feel like, well, I'm kind of glad it ended that way. You know, maybe you felt bad about shit. Maybe you didn't. Maybe I just didn't fucking put the money when you, I should have known when you're like, okay, it's time to go to bed. Here's, 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 here's time to go to bed. And I was like, oh, high five. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I never have it. It'd be funny though, right? I, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I just know I believe myself. I believe my gut. I believe nobody should be treated with disrespect in their own home. I believe if you're with somebody in a relationship, you should listen to them, which I try. I don't do it well all the time. I talk a lot, so it's hard to stop and let you go. But I, I try, and I feel bad if I, you know, upset somebody about over that. But I'll be goddamned if I'm ever treated like I'm stupid, or you're talking down to me, or, you know, um that you, you keep me out of the loop of what's going on when it affects me, like, like literally affects me, whether it's waiting up for you or uh, any number of things that you don't find it, it's worth fucking uh, me expecting, having expectations of you contacting me and letting me know what the fuck's going on, what time you're going to be home if you're going to be back in my house, uh, you know, what time you want me to pick you up if you want me to come pick you up, or where the fuck you're at, because like, you know, I might have cared at one point what fucking place you were at, not getting fucking raped or killed or beaten or whatever. It was a fucking scary place. And you, in my opinion, at one time, I felt that you were somebody I was trying to protect, trying to help. That's what you do when you like somebody. You don't treat them shitty. You don't withhold fucking any kind of, like, affection. It's not. And that, that, that's when I knew, like, if this is going to be real easy. I don't feel right. It's gone. I'm, and that's it. That's it. That's all it is. I'm not, I'm not worried anymore about it. So, you know, thank you very much for being my muse. Like, I, I'm not, I never lied about that. You did inspire me to write a song. Um, I started writing another one, but it's not, it's definitely not going to be in there. I, I don't think that one's ever going to see the light of day. But, uh. Love, love's like a club that I'm, that I'm not a member of. And I think it's going to be a good song. <laughs> so, um, thank you guys out in Facebook land, out in YouTube land, out in the rest of Ohio, Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, all of the fucking great states. Canada, the country up north. Mexico, the country down south. Everyone in the rest of the world, and in Nigeria, the Philippines, all my friends across the great galaxies. Thank you. Even you, exes. Because without you, I could not be this guy here. So well-adjusted. <laughs> so creative. Uh, I wouldn't have all these wonderful songs like, you know, like Asphyxia and End Season. The new one we got. I wouldn't have one for, one for you. So I appreciate the struggle you've had and uh the price that you had to pay you know you had to hang out with me for a little while maybe some of you settled better than others some were quick you might young girl you might be the last and the quickest so i appreciate it all by every one of you um you helped me be a better person better songwriter so um all right i'm gonna leave it with this uh be got be nice to each other if you're in a relationship be trustful be sacrifice, you know, talk. Don't don't judge, belittle, and fucking try to get things to do to the other person and it's not the way to do it. It's uh, you know, it's supposed to be a partnership. Relationship is. Partnership. You gotta be friends. Right? You gotta yeah, you gotta trust them. So be good to each other. I don't think it's that hard. Try to use some modesty. Try to use some modesty, even. Um, they said, like, yeah, but you're modest. Oh, yeah. And it's true. Um, it's, you know, it's a, 
like trust is something it's so hard to, 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 to win back but it's so easy to have like, if you're honest with people right from the get go they trust you in the beginning they get used to you being in person and then they don't have to you know worry about it so love each other trust each other sacrifice for each other be nice to one another for real all of you guys be nice to one each other and uh I'll leave you with that. Kevin Easy out.